is Robin Tunnicliffe, and you're the manager of Sea Bluff Farms yes, here. That's and, me. Uh, Bob is sort of your boss. <laughs> yeah, I'm Bob's boss. <laughs> okay, so yeah. how is the, uh, you've been here eight years, I understand. Yeah. Uh, how has the business been going over that time and, and organic business in general? Yeah, I think it, it just keeps increasing every year. Um, mm -hmm. We've definitely seen leaps and bounds with COVID of people mm -hmm. wanting to buy local. The mm -hmm. farm stand has been uh, exponentially busier than it was in previous years. You're still Our only open two days a week, though. Well, it's kind of always open, but we stock it fresh oh, yeah. Tuesdays and Saturdays. Yeah. We can't harvest every day yeah. of the yeah. week, otherwise yeah. we'd not get any work done. Yeah. 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 People in general are looking for organic. That you know, People that find us are looking for organic, so it's a pretty easy sell. I think in the... You know, 20 years ago when we were trying to sell organic, it was a big, it was a big uh, education piece to get people to understand the difference between conventional and organic. But I think that the media has done a great job explaining the difference. So people are looking for organic. Um, I think, you know, there's there's a lot of everybody growing, so people can find what they're looking for. You know, the peninsula has the bigger farms, and uh, those service kind of the mainstream, and then we get the. The niche markets where people are looking for organic, they want local, they want, uh, you know, island grown, that kind of stuff. And the laws uh, recently changed, so if somebody's advertising organic, that's illegal, it has to be, yeah, has to they be certified have to be, organic. Yeah, they have to be engaged in a certified organic program in order to use the word organic. Mm -hmm. okay. This is uh, one of our two greenhouses. It's full of tomatoes at the moment. We're, we're getting to the end of the tomato season. so. All these tomatoes are going to come out in two or three weeks, and uh, salad there, greens will go there, in. Oh, the greens? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll plant salad greens in there, so we got salad in the winter. But the uh, tomatoes, if they're not ripe, you take them out anyway? Yes. And then what? Sell oh, them oh, oh, well, green? green tomatoes, you can sell people green yeah. tomatoes because they make them in relishes and all that. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, so the fact they're green, mm -hmm. uh, I sure, they're not worth as much, but, mm -hmm. you know, you don't throw them out yeah. completely. People oh. use them. Yeah. People want green tomatoes, oh, good. especially people who are making relish and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And what varieties do you have in there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy the Tomato seeds. <laughs> and, and, and Robin would be able to tell you. I, 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 I've got no idea at all as to the names of all these plants. Other people do the, the buying of the yeah. seeds and the managing of the crops and yeah. all that. It's all too complicated yeah. for me now. <laughs> this organic farming gets very complicated. <laughs> it's not Lots simple of anymore. Lots of paperwork, too. Oh, God, yes. Terrible. Yes. I... I I, I weed and I drive tractors and I till and mm -hmm. sort of do that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. How much uh, acreage do you have here? Ten acres. Ten. Wow. Yeah. Ten acres wow. on this lot. Yep. And you're really pumping out a lot of stuff here then. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, growing actively on between six and seven, you know, actual. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, buildings and this and that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's about uh, between six and seven of, of real real production land and this is the production over here yes here yeah. is production coming this oh yeah there we are so so anyway yeah this is production down here those mm -hmm. are uh our uh, strawberries those are this year's strawberries there's another strawberry mm -hmm. patch there which this is its third year it's coming out strawberries last for two or three years mm -hmm. and uh, then you replace them uh, how many employees do you have here working this half a dozen Mm. Yeah, in the summer it's half a dozen. During the winter we'll go down to about three. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. And mm. Uh, they keep busy. And you're on a well here? Or city no. Water? No, I've got, well, you'll see in a moment, I've got uh, irrigation going. I'm pulling water from Bilston Creek, which is about half a mile away. Mm -hmm. I got a water, water license on that creek. It mm -hmm. dates back to the late 40s. Mm -hmm. So it's a high priority water license. Mm -hmm. First come, first served and mm -hmm. water licenses. Mm -hmm. So I've got a good solid source of water. Year round. Year round. Yeah. And uh, I've also put in city water. There's, there's uh, pipes in the field so that I can... Um, hook hoses up and use city water too, mm -hmm. which you do when you're sort of transplanting and, yeah. you know, you want a hose and a bit of stuff, and turning on the irrigation. You is, overhead water mostly, it looks yes. like. Yes, I, I overhead water. There's Well, those uh, strawberries are on drip tape. Mm -hmm. I've got leeks down there. They're on drip tape. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, uh, about half of the, yes, uh, there's a fair amount that we use drip tape for, but it's mostly overhead water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Most people don't use overhead water because they don't have the water. I got the water mm -hmm. so I can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have old uh, aluminum irrigation pipes, two inch old ones. I got pipes that are over half a century old. <laughs> <laughs> they keep on going forever, and uh, and I buy 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 uh, replacements and junk sales. Mm -hmm. I don't like having to buy new irrigation equipment. Yeah. It's kind of expensive. Yeah. So this is the orchard that you have, and it looks like uh, prune plums and yeah. Uh, what there's uh, plums. The these two trees here are plums. That is, this looks like it's green gauges or something. I'm yeah. not quite sure oh, what yeah. that's supposed to be. Yeah. It's a new one. It's been stuck in here. We're, we're most likely, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's mostly apples. The orchard is old. Um, it's been here for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And green gauges are, you well, know, they're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They aren't hard to sell either. Anything sweet, I know, it's really people really snap. Oh, it up. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything with sugar in it. <laughs> people like sugar. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so now you've uh, you've mo doing mostly a box program. Or how has the COVID yeah. affected your business? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, how has COVID affected the business? We lost all our restaurants. Uh, about a third of our sales went to restaurants. When I say our, I, I'm talking Sanich Organics because mm -hmm. we we cooperatively market mm -hmm. through Sanich. About a third of it was restaurants, and it all went. And uh, and last year we did 120 boxes, but because we lost all the restaurants, this year we're doing 300. Mm -hmm. And we signed up more box customers just like that. No problem at all. We could have kept on signing up more and more, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of hassle to putting out 300 boxes. Yeah. You and know, you got to have a production and plan. And you got to deliver them too. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've got a cube van. We, we've got a person who does the marketing and a cube van to deliver them. So we deliver the boxes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's, that's been part of Sanitary Organics ever since it started, actually. And you don't have trouble with deer here, I suppose. I've got deer fence all the way around. Yeah. If I didn't, I, and the deer eat the, the stuff off the stand. <laughs> The roadside stand is yeah. not behind the deer fence. So so at night, we, we take a lot of the stuff off, and the stuff we leave on, we, we cover it with towels. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the deer will come by and mm -hmm. clean it up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, there are deer. You've got to work around them. Are these leeks this over here? Those are leeks. Yeah. Oh. And I'm, they, they're being grown with drip tape this year. This is the first year that we've grown uh, leeks with drip tape. Mm -hmm. and, and so they're being si watered with city water. Like, like all the drip tape is on city water. Mm -hmm. the, uh, ir the, the sprinkler water comes from the creek, but it's too dirty for drips. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah. you'd have to really filter it in mm -hmm. order. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it will block up mm -hmm. the holes in your t tape. So, and so all you that. harvest these in the w in winter or yeah. The yeah. early winter? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. they, they, they will go all winter, mm -hmm. actually. Um, yeah, we'll start harvesting those after things. When you get demand, you harvest is that yeah. about it. <laughs> well, well, as a matter of fact, we don't intend to start taking leeks for a while because uh, I want the fresh, fresh vegetables in the winter. Mm -hmm. And leeks, one of the ones that you can get fresh. You can come out in the middle of the winter and pull it and get a fresh vegetable, you know. And and, and that's really it smells better and all that kind of stuff. I remember speaking of winter vegetables. I remember you saying that you had a whole harvest of parsnips. Oh yes, that you were you know, taking to the restaurants at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a few parsnip beds in yeah. over there, and and yes, yeah. And and I'd rather not even start harvesting them until we have a frost. Mm -hmm. And and with the first frost, then it makes the parsnips sweeter. Mm -hmm. They taste better after mm -hmm. after that. And yeah, I've got. A, Two, three beds of parsnips over there. So, yeah, we'll be hauling out parsnips, another winter vegetable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, my whole thing here is to try to have as many vegetables in the ground in the fall as possible so we can be taking them out all winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we're about the only farm that actually has winter vegetables in any quantity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, a seller's market. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seller's like market. Like $5 a parsnip? <laughs> yes! <laughs> absolutely! <laughs> Okay, cut there. Okay, the, this greenhouse is full of cherry tomatoes. It's the only thing in it. 
Those are all cherry tomatoes. Wow, well, that's a lot of picking. Yes, it is. And uh, but people love cherry tomatoes. Yeah. They just eat them like candy. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and all these tomatoes will come out, and salad greens will go in there for the winter. So we we have winter salad greens. You're lucky you can grow them here because Heather in uh, Sanageton, where she grows, she's tried to grow these, and the uh, CFI shut her down because of the uh, um, the uh, nematode. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, tomatoes peppers. are a nightshade like potatoes. Yeah, so you can grow them on your property as long as you consume them on your property, but once you sell them or take them off the property, it's like, whoa. Oh, but, yeah. okay. But five years ago, they did a big uh, test, and they, all these people came out with their white coats and tested the soil mm -hmm. all over the place. They never found one. Well, that's it. I was just going to ask. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the nematode has been there for over half a century. Yeah. I, I don't know when the restriction came in, but it's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And and you never hear about it. I mean, what's it going to take to get it lifted? What can you do to... It's an act of parliament, and it has to do with the United States. Oh, God. So, uh, even the test that they used for the nematode had to be one that the U.S. used. It couldn't be this advanced test from Europe that they wanted to use. So, and oh. still they didn't find any, so I don't know. It so, it's this. another <laughs> trade thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, joy. Yeah. So it'll never, it'll never go away. <laughs> well, and we're growing more and more of our own seeds as a result. We, mm -hmm. we're, we're upping our mm -hmm. seed production mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. And the idea is eventually to be producing much more seed in quantity mm -hmm. than we are now. To sell and to use. I guess. That's right. Mm -hmm. to, 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 to grow a few grains, uh, strains of seed in bulk and, mm -hmm. and, and make them available. Mm -hmm. that, that could be happening in mm -hmm. five, ten years or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Depending upon how serious everybody is. Mm -hmm. so this is well, this is our, our, our present construction project. And it's an outdoor bathroom, an outhouse. And it's got a composting toilet and all that kind of stuff. It's got plumbing. A sink. So you got, got uh, yeah, sink, hand wash. It's all, you know, um, CFIA approved kind of thing or VHA approved. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, this uh, there was a work party down here and, and, and someone uh, brought some kids with them who were sort of eight to ten years old. Uh -huh. And uh, they made this picture. <laughs> and that will go on. The, uh, this will get siding on it, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the last things to do to it. And you said it had a solar panel for light. Yeah, yeah. There's for a, light yeah the, the toilet actually has a little fan. Oh, right. Uh -huh. and, and so it's run off a solar panel, and it just goes continuously. Uh, this little area, which is what, uh, sort of... 50 by 100 or something, or less than that even, is all seed plot. And, and these are uh, little beds of seeds, which, uh, and they're, a lot of them are heirloom varieties and different things that we want to grow, but you can't really get them. So so we're, we grow them ourselves and, and see if we can get seeds out of them. And, and yeah, and we are. We Some work and some don't. Um, and we're finding out which ones work and which ones don't. And and this whole effort will expand, I imagine, in the future. I guess you have to know about cross-pollination, too. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Be a problem. yeah, yeah, you have to keep things isolated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. There. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, uh, and of course, in order to avoid cross-pollination for some plants, you know, we haven't started doing it yet. We haven't done that, but I can see us doing it eventually. You know, you put them in plastic bags mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that uh, they don't get pollinated with something they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but that's a hell of a lot of work. Well, yeah, and, and it can go wrong. And, and you need the bees to do the pollinating, so you can't... Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, have bees or mason bees or anything Bees there? over there, you can only see three. Normally, uh, most of the hives are up in the Sioux Hills at the moment. Mm -hmm. There's uh, one, uh, two of those hives are active, I think. One of them's mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. But uh, there'd be um, one to two dozen hives there normally. Mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who takes care of them? A guy from Croatia called Mike. Oh, okay. And Mike does bees. He and comes in his white suit and a smoker. And that's right. He has a smoker and a suit. And, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah. Hmm. And, and, and he's, he's sort of, um, the bees attack him. 
Yeah, when Mike is here fooling with his bees, I'll, I'll I'll be there with nothing on at all, and I'll be just fine. And he's all suited up, and if he <laughs> gets unsuited, he's going to get stung. <laughs> and so so yeah. I, I I have some kind of affinity for the bees, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. I, it's very rare for me to get stung. Yeah. But no, uh, but he cool. sure does. Hmm. You know, I I think it's how people smell or something. Yeah, I think so too. It, it's uh, you know some people smell better than others. I, I guess to take, a bee. <laughs> if you take too many showers, you probably get stung a lot too. <laughs> yeah. That's my theory anyway. Yeah, 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 that's an idea. Just yeah, a reason for not taking showers. <laughs> bee repellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the last three or four years, I've been trying to grow Hubbard squash. I used to grow it all the time, and I get nice big Hubbard squashes, and and then Robin came along and. She she didn't want Hubbard squash because they were too big. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, yeah. well, let's grow them anyway. And, and she tried for two or three years, and she couldn't get them to go. This year, they've gone. Huh. And uh, and we're getting Hubbard squash. Too I big, am happy. Too big to sell or put in a box? Is that the idea? Well, yeah. She said, well, we'll have to cut them all up and, yeah. and do them in plastic. But, well, I suppose they will do a certain amount. But, uh, huh. but uh, chefs like big squashes like mm. this, especially mm -hmm. people who are doing banquets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They get a Hubbard squash mm -hmm. and they cut it in the middle and half hollow it out mm -hmm. and they fill it with stuff and it sits there in the middle of the table and and, mm -hmm. and it's an easy dish for them to do. Feeds a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And and these Hubbards are not that large. I, I used to grow Hubbards that were 60, 80 pounds. <laughs> yeah. The, these are still growing, but they're not going to get like that. No. Well, and do these, I don't know, do these squash sort of, the leaves sort of look rotten, but they're still growing, so the fruit's still getting bigger? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, they're still a, growing. They're, the they're still active. Yes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah, we, well, we're still in August. Mm -hmm. We're still in August, and so, and, and so, so the squash are still growing. Mm -hmm. um, when we, um, well, you can, we'll get a cold night where there'll be just a little touch of frost, not very much, but it'll be enough to knock all the squash plants down. Mm -hmm. All these squash plants, which are sticking up at the moment, will go in one night. Oh, they'll be lying on the ground the next morning, and they mm -hmm. won't be coming back. Yeah. And that's when you can harvest? Oh, yeah, it makes it easier, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> native plant hedgerow. And... and uh, People produce native plants. As a matter of fact, we're, we're closely allied with people, local native plant producers. And one of them put this in hmm. as a showpiece for himself yeah. and his business. That's fine. There's fireweed here, I noticed. Yeah. That's the only one I can identify. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know what they all are. There's a lot of different plants in here. It's been here for three years. It's growing up nicely. It provides habitat for pollinating insects, bumblebees, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're losing our honeybees. So it's harder and harder to get things pollinated with, with domestic bees. So it's a matter of having to manufacture habitat for native species. Yes. And the snakes can live in there, too. Probably oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, no, no, this will be a, a going concern. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, it goes continuously, and you plant it and it's gonna stay water that, it and it's, leave it. It's going to stay that height. It's not going to go higher. I don't think it's going to go particularly yeah. higher. I think that uh, mm -hmm. it's more, it, it may, uh, some of these plants may go up a little bit more, but mm -hmm. I don't think they're mm -hmm. going to go very far. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but they are growing strongly here now. It, it's taken well. Hmm. And uh, oh, I yeah, and great. if you go along here, you'll most likely see. Uh, well, you'll see bees. There's a honey bee, or oh, a yeah. bumblebee. Yeah. There's there's about half a dozen species of bumblebees here. Mm -hmm. You know, not all the bumblebees are the same at all. And and I'd like to see more and more different ones. I don't know what they all are. A bee person would know right away. A bee person, I've, I've uh, videotaped their whole lecture on bees. And, uh, yeah, the bees are from that size up to that size. And um, there are, oh, I don't know, maybe a thousand different kinds in B.C. It's like, uh, bumblebees. You know, well, or just bees, bees in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's there's a, a lot of diversity yeah. in bees. I, yeah, I never even noticed when you start looking at them. Oh, that's a small one. That's a big one. That's about. Yeah, they're you know. different species. Yeah. And uh, and of course they've been totally neglected because everybody uses honeybees. Yeah. But now honeybees are no longer nearly so viable. So mm. people are paying a lot more attention to mm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. And uh, an unexplored resource. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah.
Yeah, so so the more native hedgerows, the more native plants that go in, actually, it, it's better for everything. We, we, mm -hmm. we get more of our traditional or native or aboriginal fauna or whatever you want to call it. I noticed you don't have any Himalayan blackberries around. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a reason? <laughs> uh, Somebody dug them up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's Himalayan blackberries next door. <laughs> and they stay there. Next door there are Himalayan blackberries, <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 there's, oh, I've dug up a lot, of, but, the, but the standard blackberry, you know, it's, uh, it's here. But, the trailing one? Yeah. This is the rhubarb okay. patch, and it's very successful. I had a rhubarb patch down by that greenhouse down there for close to 10 years. I had this rhubarb patch and I kept on feeding it and trying to make it go. And the rhubarb never really got happy and became productive. So finally I, I uh, gave up on it and decided we will dig it all up and, and we split the rhubarb and sold half of it. And then I put the other half in up here in this patch and it's grown like stink here. This has been really productive rhubarb, hmm. and this is its second year. And, and these are good, strong, solid plants which are going like crazy. And it's kind of amazing to move from one area on your farm to another, and there's not really that much difference in mm -hmm. soil condition or anything mm -hmm. like that. But for some reason or another, the rhubarb really liked it here, hmm. and it didn't like it there. Hmm. And, uh, and, and you, you know, had the landscape cloth there as well? No, I didn't have landscape. No, no, I put down landscape cloth so that we wouldn't have to weed so much. It's mm -hmm. possible that the, the landscape cloth made a difference because the original patch did not have landscape mm -hmm. cloth. I, I weeded it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Robin didn't want to weed rhubarb. It's a lot of work re weeding rhubarb. Mm -hmm. And of course, once the patch is in, it's permanent. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, this landscape yeah. cloth may stay here for 20 years yeah. for all I know. Yeah. So it costs a bit of money to put it in, but it certainly does save a lot of effort. Here's celery. We got uh, we got three beds, and uh, two of them are celery, and one is celeriac. You know the the stuff that makes the root. Mm -hmm. And uh, another and I, winter vegetable. Winter vegetable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so we'll be digging a celery root up, and and it grows well here. They come out nice. They're good. Mm. I don't have things eating them. And I can throw as much water as I want on. Mm -hmm. The celery is, is good. It, uh, it tastes good. These are parsnips. I like growing parsnips. You can grow huge parsnips here. I've grown parsnips that are that big around and that long. Wow. And uh, you sort of need an excavator to dig them out. <laughs> but, uh, but you can take them smaller too. Parsnips are slow to start so they can get overwhelmed by weeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see I got a few weeds in that. I've, mm -hmm. I've gone through that parsley, mm -hmm. or that parsnips. Speaking I, of, I weeded it out twice. I weeded it out twice. Now I'm just letting it go. Mm. But uh, speaking but, of weeds, uh, I remember. Uh, I don't know if uh, Robin still has that scout or cub uh, tractor. Oh yes. And it uh, supposedly the good thing about it, you can weed between rows real easily yes. with it. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm I'm using it. Oh, oh but yeah, you still I, have to hand weed, I guess. Well, I still. Oh yeah. No, no. Yeah. You still have to hand yeah. weed to some degree. But but yes, you you weed mechanically as much as you can, but uh, it never gets them all. It, if you mm -hmm. want to make it really clean, you go through afterwards mm -hmm. and do it by hand. Mm -hmm. Like those beets that I showed you before, it, we've been mechanically weeding those, but now I'm finishing off by hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of hand weeding that you got to do if you're mm -hmm. going to be an organic farmer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. The weeds never rest. <laughs> and uh, here's our corn. We flood irrigate the corn. It... Uh, I've, uh, with the water from the from the stream, I can run water down these and flood irrigate it. And the corn is so much better when it's flood irrigated you rather mean, than sprinkled. You mean water just runs down these yeah. rows here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Oh, it's not level though, is it? No, it runs downhill. You see, oh, okay. so so you can put water in here and you can sort of get it going down the row and hmm. and and water the whole thing, and it really juices the uh, cobs up. Have you started picking them yet? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we're in the midst of yeah, picking that. corn. Okay, so what is going on here, uh, Bob? This is our washing station. It's uh, been operating now for about three years. We built it very fancy. It replaced an old rotten thing that was falling down. So, so it's got a nice concrete floor and everything. Um, 
so the stuff comes in to this side and mm -hmm. starts getting the dirt off mm -hmm. with hoses and so on. Then it goes into these uh, bathtubs for a final wash, goes out onto those racks to dry and then gets packaged over there. Is there some reason the bathtubs are pink? I saw pink bathtubs and I decided <laughs> to have pink bathtubs, but you can see that they're getting old mm -hmm. and a little bit rusty mm -hmm. and we're talking about replacing them mm -hmm. and, and whether or not they are replaced with pink is um, <laughs> remains to be determined. Yeah. <laughs> it's a well, matter of discussion. Whatever the salvage yard has. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny, I, I, I got one. A pink one, and I liked it. We had a pink one and a white one, and 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 then the the white one screwed up somehow. So we got another pink one. <laughs> it's amazing the number of old bathtubs, the plumbing shops, mm -hmm. and the, and the and the recycling people. They take out the old bathtub and put in a new one, and the plumbers have backyards <laughs> full of old bathtubs. Yeah. You can pick them up for yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you can make a uh, a worm composting thing in there. Oh yeah, because you have yeah. a drain. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can Perfect, do stuff yeah. with old bathtubs. Yeah. That, uh, there's a sort of inexhaustible supply. Yeah. 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 Good idea. Okay. A couple of years ago, my wife and I made a decision to really change the focus of Sea Bluff Farm and focus on open pollinated heirloom variety seeds instead of hybrid and uh, larger company uh, seed companies. We've been supporting smaller scale open pollinated heirloom companies and what we've started to do is uh, as a result started our own quarter acre seed plot where we've been saving seed um, about 30 different varieties and focusing on large scale um, amounts for the farm, uh, it's primarily, so we're, we go through a lot of salad greens, um, so there's about five different mustard greens that we save. We've got all kinds of um, uh, tomatoes and higher volume stuff that we w don't want to rely on uh, a seed company that may have patents or trademarks on the seed. So instead, we've uh, taken the... Um, big step of uh, growing our own seeds and what this allows us to do is actually do some selective breeding of picking out which ones have either better taste or uh, have overwintered so not only are we um, not relying on these big seed companies that we're also improving the uh, seed for our specific geographic area so this has been a really interesting thing when we started almost um, eight years ago here there was no chard that overwintered and my wife was um, at her other farm um, growing out the chard that overwintered <clears throat> and now we have chard that totally overwinters the whole season so it's really even in short term um, uh, time frame you can see big big changes in even like a five-year period so this year we're just continuing on um, with uh, all kind of different uh, varieties and really focusing on what can save money on our uh, seed bill uh, here at Sea Bluff Farm. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for yeah. uh, allowing us on your farm and <laughs> seeing everything. Um, Bob's been a great help in oh, good. understanding yeah. things. He doesn't know the varieties, so <laughs> next time we'll come, we'll find out what just exactly what, what you're doing. Yeah. 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 yeah, excellent. Yeah, good. Oh, well, thank thanks. you very much. Yeah. said you pipe out the effluent to the field or something? Yeah, yeah, well actually this way. They ju just just uh, the pee mm -hmm. and the toilet, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Um, oh, it separates it? Yeah. Just like a, a yeah, tank yeah. does. And, and the toilet uh, disposes, uh, yeah, it goes into, and you re replace the, the guts of the toilet every so often and mm -hmm. compost it or do whatever you're going to do with it. Yeah. Well, Linda Gilkison said that pea is the best thing you can fertilize with. Absolutely. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. High nitrogen. Yeah. No, no. Uh, uh, pea uh, is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing goes to waste around here, I take it. Uh, well, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the whole business of recycling waste. I mean, this is, this is something which is not being done properly. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. very, what, what's happening at the moment is, I mean, the systems that we get, I mean, look at Victoria. It still doesn't have a, a sewage disposal plant. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you can imagine the amount of planning and money and everything they put into trying to do it. And they're still 
Still don't have it. <laughs> they're building a pipe. <laughs> oh, there are pipes, all right. <laughs> and uh, it goes into the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, they want to send it up to Heartland Dump instead of the ocean. That's their solution. <sighs> yeah, but exact, except that Heartland is about to close down. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Heartland is due mm. to close. You know, in 10 years, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not going to be replaced. We're going to ha have a, uh, the Victoria's uh, waste disposal is going to be um, landfill free. That's the story. Uh, and where's it going? Up in the smoke? Recycled. Oh. And yes, and what will happen is, yes, there will be more and more stuff which can't be recycled and it will go into uh, trucks and barges like it is at the moment and transported to the mainland and go through uh, recycling centers there. We mm -hmm. don't have a proper recycling center here in Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. There's uh, so so uh, the bulk stuff which is coming off the island going to the recycle it goes to the recycling in Vancouver. Nothing here. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. sorted here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of the stuff that goes to Vancouver they send it through the recycling uh, center and uh, and then of course they want to sell the product of the re recycling center, but they can't get enough buyers, so it goes to the landfill anyway. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so, so, so in order to avoid putting stuff in the landfill, it's run through a recycling process where it's all chewed up and organized and all that kind of stuff and made into uh, um, feed products for industry. But industry isn't buying it that much, so it goes to the dump anyway mm -hmm. with all this mm -hmm. added mm -hmm. time and energy and expense. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing is very wasteful. Yeah. Poor design to start with. Oh, yeah. Don't even get me going on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go talk about vegetables.